Somebody says, how come you, how come you don't have any information on your ch channel about biochar? Uh, so the, actually that, that's the, uh, we, we do kind of use our own version of biochar and I talk about it a little bit in the, in the, the video that that's coming out for you is, uh, like we apply wood ash to our gardens as a form of fertilizer. And I, but I also burn my uh, bones after I make bone broth and I've pulled like as much of the minerals out as I can uh, for, for making soups and things like that. Then I burn the, the bones in my fire, but they don't actually disintegrate that they, they, there's loads of surface area within the bones and we apply that to our gardens. And yeah, there's oh, some, some charcoal and things like that left over. Uh, I haven't done a ton of research on biochar. Uh, and this is another thing where it's like context is everything is like biochar was a fantastic uh, tool uh, or a, a practice that was developed in a particular context, uh, namely the, the Amazon rainforest. And in their context, the, the tropical rainforest, the, the, the decomposition cycle is so fast that there's almost no topsoil. And, and part of that is, is because the rains are so heavy there, the topsoil will just get washed away. And so naturally the soils are very poor because all the nutrients is locked up in living plants. Um, because when a tree falls within like a few weeks, it's gone because the, it's so humid there, it can just break down rapidly. And so humans, uh, indigenous populations in the past found that if you were to turn, turn, some, turn organic matter into uh, 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 coal uh, or, or biochar, uh, it basically, you can, uh, you can create a bunch of surface area and, and uh, you know, it's, it's a great pore space for bacteria and it kind of buffers, you know, pH and things like there's a lot of different things that it does, but it, it was like really great for their context. And I'm not saying it wouldn't benefit our soils here, but there's kind of an 80, 20, like on my farm, we were stripping a dam uh, like two days ago at our place and we're on like a t the top of our hills and we've got three feet of like black topsoil. Yeah, exactly. Context. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I don't need any more biochar in my soil. My plants are doing that for me. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's, it's not a weak link for me. Uh, would it, would it benefit? Probably, but the amount of energy it would take me to, to, you know, uh, to use pyrolysis to like, to burn it in an oxygen free environment. Um, like I would have to do a, a, se a separate thing that I couldn't use anywhere else versus like wood ash is a byproduct. It has nutrients in it and there's some unburnt material. Um, it's fine like that, but I'm getting the same benefit of, of uh, biochar just in the, the carbon that my plants are sucking into the ground. That's it's, it's great. Cause it's, it's the, the whole biochar thing. It's, it's almost like a religious cult. Sometimes like I, I, I have some, this group of people that have been emailing me for years. I swear they email me like at least once a month for a while. They'd email me every day. You need to talk about biochar, whatever, whatever. But what you just said pretty much closed the book on this for me is that it's context. <laughs> and because of the, the, uh, where, this came, where this came from originally, historically, was in the Amazon forest where there is barely any topsoil. Makes sense. In Alberta, you guys are swimming in topsoil. Yeah. The, the prairies, the grasslands, where all the ruminant animals grazed, you've got endless amounts of topsoil. So what's the point, especially when you, when, when you put it in the context of, well, then with the biochar creation, you got to do this one thing that doesn't stack in anything else. Whereas you can get somewhat of a biochar result from just using wood ash or throwing your broth bones in there. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. And, and the thing is like, like it, the other, the other piece is like, it's not a weak link for me. Like, like, I, I, you've seen my garden scores. Like I can, like th I'm a super lazy gardener, and like you can just like throw shit on the ground, and it just you know Goes. I have beets this year that were like you know eight inches in diameter and like two feet long. It's just like so um, that's it's like context and and weak link, and like and then the Pareto's principles. Like what's the eighty twenty? And in the rainforest, it absolutely was the, was the eighty twenty there, and and again, coming back to this context, the, one of the, 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 the theories about kind of how this biochar was created is that the, the, their kind of, you know, human waste and garbage was kind of a problem. And so like they, they must have developed some kind of like a sanitation system where they were like turning their garbage into, a, into something valuable in this, this pyrolysis process where you're, you're burning firewood within, in an oxygen-free environment 
um, and then incorporating that into your into your top cell. And and that that literally, based on the research that I've seen, is what enabled people to live in that that context. Without that, they could not have done annual agriculture because their top soils and the nutrients would have just washed away. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I also will admit, uh, I, I have not experimented with it, with it myself. I could be totally wrong. I could be missing, you know, the, the, the one kind of piece of, of, you know, information that would, that would change my mind on this thing. However, after seeing enough of these silver bullets and taking, spending a lot of money, you know, oh, it's compost tea. That's going to fix all my problems. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. it's it's balancing my my the magnesium in my in my soils. Oh, it's fish hydrolysis. Like, yeah. like yeah. the the, the, Mo- the monomania thing. monomania thinking. It one, is oh, one thing of all your yeah. problems. So that the the easiest way to cure yourself of that kind of thinking is just spend time researching other people's you know silver bullets, because you'll see that it's like oh well, like if he's right. I, I couldn't be right. So it comes down to that, that context piece and, um, and, you know, doing a weak link analysis and, and things like that. Great stuff.